caught him in the, the left at the end of the first round. Probably if he had a few more seconds, he could have finished it in the first round. Do you know it was coming in the second? Um, I wanted coming out into the second. Um, I wanted to see if he still he still had his legs under him. I didn't want to come in and just rush. I noticed that he did have, uh, you know, he did kind of gain his composure again. So we just stick to the game plan, try to outbox him, try to keep the distance, uh, not exchange too with them and too much with them in the pocket, not not end up in the clinch and, and uh, take some elbows, um, you know. But for the most part, I just kept my composure and stuck to the game plan, and it worked out fine. It wasn't really supposed to happen that way if you look at it on paper, like what the odds makers were saying. Did you think about that kind of thing coming in here? I mean, it's a short notice thing for you. It's your, it's your debut. It's an established local guy, all that stuff. Yeah. And, you know, he was a pretty big favorite. Yeah, uh, I, I did I did see the odds. Tim Mees was way uh, more, more favorite than I was. But, um, you know, uh, you know, I believe in myself. You know, we took this fight two weeks notice um, against a, a seasoned vet, you know, a guy with established name. And you know, I feel like uh, taking him out. I'm ready. You know, I'm ready to to take on better dudes. And you know, I don't want to be babied in the UFC. I want the I want the good opponents, and I want you know, I want to I want to continue to rise in the ranks like I have my whole career. It's hard to be babied when you start out with a guy like that who's been around yeah. for a long time and been in there against a lot of big names. Yeah, yeah. Tim means uh, I was expecting more of a war, you know, um, but I just outclassed him. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you think at all about how quickly you want to get back in there after something like this? I mean, is this a, like, holy cow, man, nobody expected this out of me. Let's string some stuff together here in a hurry and, and really put my name out there in the division. Yeah. Everybody who knows this, who knows me, expected this out of me, and they got it. You know, I expected this out of me. My team expected this out of me. And, um, you know, I'm ready to fight again. You know, I took no damage. I feel great. I took the fight at two weeks' notice. And uh, if you give me a full fight camp, I'm just going to do, I'm, I'm going to tear it up, you know? So I'm ready. It seemed like the, the basic straight, uh, straight left jab. Yeah. Kind of done today. Yeah. Uh, my jab was feeling amazing today. Uh, he was throwing some jabs, but I, there was no nothing behind it. But I know he was feeling my jabs. From how the play went and Tim running at you in the face off, did you expect? the start of the fight to go as it was a little more feeling each other out uh yeah i expected him to come out swinging crazy you know um but he didn't and he let me uh work my game plan and um you know he he stood he stood in my distance and to be honest with you we, we we worked my game and it worked out in my favor did you think you were going to have an opening for that left hook was that part of the game plan that's always part of my game plan <laughs> And from yesterday, were you surprised by that moment at all that he came literally like running towards you, basically? Yeah, it's all for show. Sure. It's all for show. Sure. <laughs> I'm in his hometown, you know. He's got a. He's. Got, I expect him to come out hard, and and uh, he's got a bunch of fans. I know he was fighting for a cause, and uh, I expected him, you know, to, to come out, and and you know, really really bring it to me. You have been training here locally too. How was that? Also having that time. Yeah, I've I've, I've trained I've trained here uh, at the BMF Ranch. So uh, coming in, I knew what it's going to feel like to fight at elevation. So I, I, I chose to stay back in Los Angeles, um, but I knew what I was going to feel like. So every time I did train, I took my body to the feeling that I get when I train out here. Start thinking all about $50,000. Hey, yo, Dana White, what's up with that fit? I took this fight on short notice against a, a real good dude. My first UFC fight, took him out, put on a great show. What's up with my 50 Gs, man? What's up? He's so not gonna see this till tomorrow, but what oh. would you do with that kind of fifty thousand dollars? <laughs> oh man, it. Um, I, I get to live. I get. To, I get to live this life. You know, I get to live this life. I'd be financially stable enough to continue to train at an extreme, extremely high level, elite level with elite athletes such as my coaches, and um, it's a life changer. You know, I. I, I need that fifty G's. <laughs> you Do know. You have a regular job? Um, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I worked a lot of jobs. I worked construction, commercial refrigeration. Um, you know, I, I've, I've had a lot of different jobs throughout, you know, growing up. But um, this is my job now. Um, when you do this uh, so impressively, uh, you're not going to be under the radar anymore. Oh yeah. Uh, there's going to be a lot of eyes on you, especially when you win this impressively by uh, submission in the second round. That comes with a lot of pressure too. So how do you yeah. Um, I don't mind pressure. I don't feel pressure. You know, I feel like. Uh, I just, I, I proved something to myself, you know, um, like I said, I trained with elite level UFC fighters, you know, and uh, I always told myself, you know, throughout, throughout training, um, 
you know, I belong, I belong here. I belong here. This is where I belong.